I, I can't dream anymore. I haven't had a dream. I mean, I, w I would even be happy with nightmares, but I haven't even had those. My name is Corporal Justin Peter Bunce. I spent a little over four years in the Marine Corps, Grunt Marine, Infantry, 0311, Line Company, tip of the spear, first into Iraq. First time. Overall, you know, people don't know the depth and profound nature of brain injury. Nobody can comprehend how traumatic it is to like, see yourself in the mirror and see what you are now and how far you've fallen. In western Iraq in 2004, an insurgent bomb exploded next to Marine Corporal Justin Bunce, blowing shrapnel into his head. He's one of 26,000 U.S. troops who have suffered moderate or severe traumatic brain injuries since 2001. The Bunce family and their doctors have spent the past decade trying to restore Justin to the man they once knew with limited success. Now he's living in an experimental group home in Germantown, Maryland, where he receives intensive treatment. It's part of a network of similar facilities around the country that the Department of Veterans Affairs hopes will help veterans with brain injuries transition to something close to regular lives. Justin is one of 119 vets currently in the program. The VA is going to have a challenge because these are young men and women that are going to be requiring monitoring and services for their lifetime. We're just trying to get him back to the person he was mentally has just been an effort. That'll be an ongoing lifetime effort, and we're trying to get back as much as we can. Growing up, Justin was a rugby player who also loved drawing and creating computer graphics. During high school, uh, I think it was during his sophomore year, he approached me and he, he said, Dad, uh, what's the toughest service? And I, the first thing I asked is physically or mentally? And, uh, and he said physically. I, I told him the Marines physically, and he said, I'm going to be a Marine. During his second combat tour of Iraq, Justin was posted along the Iraq-Syria border, just as insurgents were expanding their use of booby trap bombs. On March 19, 2004, Corporal Bunce was on a foot patrol when shrapnel from a bomb hidden in a cemetery wall ripped through his right side. He only remembers what he's been told of the attack. Uh, they said we were on patrol and we were patrolling past the uh, graveyard. They put the uh, incendiary device inside the wall of the graveyard. They must have seen me barking orders and they called it, clicked it, whatever they did. And boom. There you go. Peter Bunce flew to an army hospital in Germany to be at his son's side. But we went right to my son's bed, and I said, that's not my son. I, I couldn't believe His head was so swollen and so large, and his face was so distorted, I didn't recognize him at all. The bomb caused profound damage to the right side of Justin's brain, crippling his left hand and leg and nearly blinding his right eye. At the time, military doctors had relatively little experience treating serious head wounds, Justin was flown back to the Naval Hospital in Bethesda, Maryland, where his father says he was encouraged to get back into the swing of things as soon as possible. Six months later, he was actually going up to Gettysburg to meet his buddies that were just coming back from the Iraq deployment. I was going over overpass, and they tell me they're about certain I had a seizure. And I flipped my mom's car down the overpass like 30 some odd times. So then he was thrown from the vehicle and was according to the reports, clinically dead when the, uh, when the life flight helicopter got to him, they revived him and then he went through a long series of uh, more injury and rehab and everything else, so that exacerbated the brain injury. You ready? An infection after the surgery destroyed more brain matter. Over the years, Justin went through a series of hospitals and rehabilitation programs. Again. In 2012, he landed the first spot at the group home in Germantown. Exhale, he receives constant physical, psychological, and speech therapies there. But it's been slow going. I've known Justin for a year and a half, since the day he came into the program. I would say I spend most of my day with Justin. A success is him getting up, taking a shower, brushing his teeth, 
sitting down, having a meal, going over his schedule, making it to appointments on time. The brain injury has left him with a bewildering array of personality quirks. He swears often and uses sexual innuendo when it isn't welcome. He just doesn't know when appropriate stops and inappropriate begins. Most of my patients, most of my veterans want what they used to be, what, however they used to identify themselves. So if they identified themselves as a ladies man or a marine or you know an army man or whatever it is that they identified with, that's what they miss. With the support of Justin's parents, the group home staff uses a carrot and stick strategy to get him to change behaviors that might disturb or frighten strangers. He gets points for brushing his teeth, cleaning up after himself, and avoiding sexual comments. Rewards include a trip to the cinema, a restaurant meal, or a weekend pass to his mother's house. Justin, now 30 years old, resents these rules. It's ludicrous that I have to uh, earn or fight for the freedoms that I killed and died for. Despite his son's frustrations, Peter Bunce believes that Justin has made progress in the program, but he's realistic about his son's prospects. I don't think Justin will ever be able to be safe to live on his own. He will always have to have supervision, but could he ever live in an apartment by himself that perhaps had somebody checking on him often? Maybe that's there. And so we're trying to find the keys, find the, find the levers that will be able to unlock that potential and get him there. The future of the group home is also uncertain. The pilot project that funds it will end in September unless Congress extends it. It's unclear where Justin and his fellow residents will live at that point. Justin is hoping for the best. I do believe that this, this house is the, the only option for a lot of my fellow vets. And there are so many veterans that don't have any support whatsoever. And uh, that is not the case for me. I couldn't ask for a better support system. My mother and my sisters, my father, they're all, they're all amazing. I, mean, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gotten out of the wheelchair if it weren't for them. I'm not just fortunate, I'm blessed, divinely favored.